Okay, y'all. Uh, this is Promethean Bryce. This is the second sculpture video. I won't have to name them um, every time I do them. I just wanted to mention this is the second one. Um, again, I'll be doing this all the way through, so forgive any mistakes um, as I'll just be talking and going along with no editing. Before I start, I just want to mention that I'm going to try and do these every two weeks. Um, I'll do them as often as I can and then add some sort of clay ones, but mainly it'll be just these 3D ones. And this is just a commentary on what I did, how I did it, um, with just a little bit of extra, just a bit of talking over, so it's just not boring. So let's get straight to it. So in the last video, I did mention that I changed the method of this. So from now on, I actually do the... It, you see the little ball to the side on the video that's um ready to sculpt and i keep it to the side just so i can copy and paste it so i don't have to keep doing a new one to space it a little bit faster a little bit easier and then i'm just getting that general shape just like before except instead of this time i said it last time sorry where i was um doing it with the sort of cylindrical tool i found that doing it straight away just like this actually works just as good if not better um, same sort of thing and it's just a hell of a lot faster so that's that and then like I said I'm just doing every bit from head to toe oh uh, forgot to mention that this is obviously if you don't know who this is is by now it's Earthworm Jim uh, the reference I'm using is from like a deviant art thing but I actually changed it to the cartoon style one in the end I'm just using that because it was the best sort of front and side reference that I had so you'll see a few things change every now and then. So I had a bit of a mistake with this head at first. Um, so I've had to do it a couple of times, but it's just a case of bending it round and getting that, like I said, that general shape. It doesn't have to be anything too in depth. Just enough to get the, um, the, the sort of solid look around it. All right, so after I've done that, I'll get into the uh, software and I'll just increase the uh, level of, subdivision just to get more detail um so i can carve into it and stuff later on you can actually take that away but i'll explain that uh, explain that at a later date but yeah so i'm just then starting to move things around to be a bit more exact to the model um not just sort of what you're looking at at the background it's also so that i'm looking at sort of a, a reference to the side and just getting that like i said because i made it the cartoon version in the end it's similar to what it is on here um, but then I've made it uh, it's just just a bit more unique, so it doesn't follow the exact thing at the back, the exact reference. So you, as you can see, I'm just getting in the muscle definition. In this one in particular, there wasn't too much to do in terms of extra gear. Um, so it's a lot of moving that muscle definition around, uh, taking a look from, again, just every side, just make sure you're looking at you know, front, side, back, using those, that front and the side, so the front and profile views mainly, but um, just going around it, constantly checking, like I said, checking the reference that side next to me and checking the reference that's behind this. Again, you're never going to be exact on, on these ones. Uh, especially with sort of stuff like the back and that, you can see like on the reference, he's wearing the backpack and he does have the backpack, but I'm just, I'll be adding those muscle mass based on sort of muscle reference in the background. So here I'm just, um, I'm not cutting in the clothes for these first couple of models because I've, I've learned as I'm going along and um, I've got a new way of doing sort of clothes which is better, which I mentioned in the last video, but I think this Earthworm Gym is the last time I did the, that sort of way, that sort of mistake. But yeah, like I cut that cylinder in um, and then added the indents because it was a, a metal surrounding around the neck. So it just went in, so it's absolutely fine to do that. But if you did want to sort of add it more, you can sort of boolean it in or carve out the middle just to give it more sort of room for the neck if you was doing, say, an animation. So I do these in, I do these in parts. Um, just another recap from like the last one if you haven't seen it. Um, just so when I pose them at the end, I can I can put them in that general shape rather than moving it around. It's a bit more awkward otherwise. So I'll build them in parts. Um, and then move them into the correct pose and then move the muscles, say, and in particular little bit uh, to make it exact. And then 
bully in unison them together um, and smooth them off just to join them all properly later. I'll, I'll mention that a bit more when it comes to it. But like here, I'm just sort of getting that secondary level of detail. So using the sort of smooth tool, the mo mainly the move tool to get all of that. So the elastic deform it's called to get that detail. Then either the the main one at the top there or this carve tool, they, t they tend to be the best two tools to use. And then again, I'm just like moving everything all around. See, I've done a little indent there just because you would see a little bit of that within the actual uh, pose. So I try to do all my hands in the same way where I'll pose each part of the finger separate now, but on the first two, the, the black cat that I did before this and this one, I did it the old way where I tried to do it all as one and then move it round. I just wouldn't recommend doing that just because it's a bit harder and it takes more time um, and you, you get a much better result if you do it separately. Um, just if you're using this for say a tutorial or something or just to get a general idea of how to do things that's just something i'll mention but as you can see i'm using the pose tool in there um like i said the pose tool isn't the best but it helps to just do sort of small things like fingers to get them into a pose unless like i said you do it the separate methods which is what i do now so he has the three fingers and the one thumb in the cartoon version i think in this reference he has five but like i said i was doing the cartoon one so we didn't pay too much attention to that then every time i've done it i'm just copying it pardon me sorry and pasting it onto the other side moving it along the vector and if it's like this for example i've cut this one and carved this in because i thought it'd be a little bit better but like i said since then i've decided to actually move the parts out and then boolean them join them but it's not that you can't do it this way it just takes a bit longer and it's just a little bit more messy and so like, like i said i'm just doing the uh glove there that goes over to the top but as you can see like you can see i'm doing a lot of cutting a lot of if you say you want a hard surface it's pretty difficult to do um you would really want to get that really nice hard surface Okay, so this is where I'm starting to do the face. And as you can see, I've added a new reference um, from the cartoon, like I was saying, because the one in the background isn't the one I wanted it. And what I'm doing, I'm not putting it exactly to the side because as you can see, the reference isn't going to be exact. So I'm getting the pose that I want, which is sort of like an angry face. I did this one like it because that's in the end, I'm doing a pose where he's sort of grabbing the gun. So I chose which one I'm doing and I just look at the back and then I do it sort of, best I can where I'm carving in moving taking adding and taking away again just like clay you're just adding stuff taking it away re using the remesh tool to get it neater and then sometimes like I said subdividing if I need more detail so yeah so I've done the math there right where I've carved it in and around and then what I'm doing is I'm just constantly editing to make sure it's the right shape and with the eyes I'm just carving that eyelid around uh, to the top reference just making those small tweaks and then like I said it's just all a case of constantly redoing it and you, you're constantly looking at that reference trying to get it as close as you can and then because I'm sculpting for the most part I'm sculpting in that mouth but in the future uh, not in the next recent ones, but soon I plan on sort of doing it so it can be animated. Um, I'm doing two versions in the future, so I'll do an animation one, which will be in a T pose or an A pose, and then the sculpt afterwards. Um, I won't be selling the animation version ones just yet, um, but do keep an eye on them for the future. Um, I'll eventually get the weight point and do it myself as well. But like I said, I'm selling the sculpts on buy me a coffee which will be linked down at the bottom of this video when they're done so if anyone's got a 3d printer they can print it off themselves or if they just want a cool 3d print or just want to support me you can just support me on the buy me a coffee or just buy a earthworm gym if you like it but like i said we're just moving these constantly moving around getting those details out best i can 
don't worry about being too perfect. I mean, you're never going to be exact. It's all sort of eyeballing it. You've got to always sort of constantly look at it, look at the reference, look back, see if it's the best you can. And everyone's sort of that slight bit different. So you might, some people's good is some people's bad. So, so once you've got all that base section done, um, when you get to the point where you feel like you want to join it later, just um, get that's when I, the point where I get the clothes done. Um, just for future reference, um, I changed the way around of doing that. I'll pose it first, then get the clothes done, just because I'm because the new method I'm doing, you have to extract it, so you have to join it first. But this way, I was doing it. I didn't need to do that, so I'm just like making the backpack, for example, side, and then we'll just sort of move it to where it needs to be. Again, it's just constantly checking, cutting in, resizing, um, remeshing, just to make sure that mesh is all nice and neat. And then with the belt, again, I'm, I do this different in the uh, more newer videos. But because it was quite static and still, and that waist was quite, uh, quite round, uh, doing it this way wasn't actually too bad. So you're just using basic mesh stuff, um, smoothing it off adding a couple of extra layers to get it look a bit more detailed. And then I'm just moving this across again. This is something I've learned different now. So this is the old way I do things, but now I know how to use curves. So I could bring one of these around a lot neater from like future reference, which I'll explain in future videos. It's not that you can't do it this way. Um, sometimes it looks quite nice, especially if you're doing a stylized character, but um, it's just the other way can be a lot neater and a lot faster. So like I said, just getting every tiny little bit of detail that you want out there. So I'm doing the belt sections and then after the belt sections, I do the connections for the belt. Like I said, this is sped up, so um, it takes a, a, a while. It usually takes me uh, five nights to do it. So I, I tend to do it sort of at night time because I do sort of comic stuff in the morning and that. And I'm just using the external tablet as well as um, just the mouse sometimes when it doesn't need too much work. Or if it's just like a hard service stuff, a mouse is usually better. But the tablet, I'll just go in, get the pressure tools to make sure it's the right pressure. And just again, it just makes it quicker. So here I started doing the um, holster for the gun. But later on, I had to change this a lot just because I changed the way the um, gun was. And it was quite big. So just for future reference for anyone, do the gun first, then the holster, just because you need to know the size of the gun. Because Earthworm's Jim's gun's quite big, because his hands are quite big. So it looks like it would be the right size here, but it's it's not. But I do, like I said, it's just keep looking at it, keep checking. Um, right now, I'm just boolean that in just to get that sort of um, look as if it can go in. Because if it was blocked out, it would just look wrong. So you just want like the hole so it could go in. So when I've done all that, for the most part, um, obviously I can still got things to do later. But it's got to the point where I can do the gun now, so I can check that holster. Which I just said, like I said, I'll do it the other way around next time. And then you just similar sort of thing, um, using the tools to flatten it off, grabbing them there. Turning the, um, just cutting in to get that sort of inside the gun. Don't have to go too far. And then just using block tools. Get, again, again, it's getting that basic shape at first. And then you're using the sculpt tool to sort of give it that curve. In this case, which which it needed. Then again, sort of, when you're doing these square things, you need to sort of add a s load of subdivision just so you can move the vertices because that's what the sort of sculpting tool does. So it's moving vertices, so you've got to have enough in order to move. So I've, this is where, like I was saying, I had to redo it a lot. Would have been easier if I did it the other way around and sort of booleaned it in. 
but I've, I've, that's not where it's going. But it's like I said, if you leave it in the holster, you've got that good size, so you know that it looks correct. Because again, like I said, after this, we're going to be moving it to where it needs to be. So yeah, so obviously I've seen here that the, the backpack isn't quite to the reference and I've just been editing that and I also edit the backpack so it goes around the back. That's just something I want this here, look. And then it's just uh, so it gets that sort of proper look. So if you left it in, it could work, especially if you was printing it off, but it just gives it a little, a little bit of a nicer, a more realistic look. Sort of more genuine, not not realistic. But again, I've seen that the uh, face just needs a little bit more work, so I'm just changing that around a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll save two files. So I'll save the original one just in case anything goes wrong. And this is where we sort of move the character into the pose that we need it to. So we use the reference that I'll be sat next to me on my phone, say, for example. And then um, we'll pose accordingly. It's pretty difficult to do, but I'm trying to still learn how to um, move that sort of pivot point. If I can get that done, it'd be a lot easier. It's not, it's, again, it's just an easy, makes it easier thing, but it's not necessary. Just grab each part, move it around, make small little tweaks every now and then. This is before you boolean it in, just make sure all the pose is correct. Because your boom lanes you want to do last just because it's going to join everything together so you won't have a chance to move it afterwards. So you just want to make sure everything's correct. And then, like I said, I'll be moving, using the move tool to move that because like, you'll notice that when, say, a finger or an arm moves, every bit of muscle is going to move with it. So you need to give sort of just that little bit of tweaking from the original pose just to get it correct. So I wanted to level off the feet here, so I've put a base in, but I use the base later anyway for the sculpt pose. So yeah, here is where I'll select an item, boolean unison it, join it, and then delete afterwards. And then you sort of merge those together by smoothing it. If you see that it's quite harsh edged or it's not joined properly, you're going, you will have to uh, use the the shaping tool again so you have to um redo all the vertices but it if it's say the fingers it's going to merge them all together so you've got to be careful with that so the higher the value the better obviously the higher the value the slower your computer is going to go because the more polygons you're using so yeah it's basically just all that all the way through you're just getting it booleaning it and finishing it off so obviously it has that nice nice neat uniformed organic look or if it's not organic you don't need to attach it obviously so i did paint this afterwards but i didn't show the paint on this recording because originally i didn't do that i just wanted to see what it would look like and from now on i do sort of paint them um I, the next video i'll be doing probably with a colossus video and again i haven't shown the paint on that one but that's because that's where i started to do it and i didn't know if it would work but now i do future videos will show that Again, it's just moving those things just slightly bits, bits around, making sure it's done properly. Because everything's going to move as you're doing it. Then, like I said, don't you don't need to boolean say the eyes because they're going to move stuff like that. The backpack or the stuff you could just join them if you need to, or pair them to another object. And I've just edited the teeth here just because I moved it around a bit more. But that's pretty much the end of the the video coming up. Um, if you like, if you like it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, tell me what you think. Um, if you want to support me, go to the links that'll be there and the, buy me a coffee. But there you go. That's it. It's all painted, all done, and rendered out. Thanks very much for watching.